Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. Thanks for joining me for this storm, this East Coast Storm Edition of Media Mark's Weather. We're going to be tracking that East Coast storm to see exactly what the impacts will be, the wind, high wind, flooding potential, extreme amount of rain, and even some wraparound snow on the backside. We'll get into all your weather from North America, as well as the tropics, all the way through this holiday season. Let's get into it. And just in a few moments, I will be covering the wind field associated with the storm. As you can see here on our European model, the core of the strongest winds, those 50 to 60 plus mile per hour winds will be making their way up the coast from the Outer Banks of North Carolina, all the way up into parts of New Jersey and New England for early tomorrow morning through the rest of Monday. So this is going to be a big component of this system, especially from I-95 on eastward. And as you can see, the core of the strongest winds even go up into Southeast Canada, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, all the way up into the Eastern Canadian provinces. This is a storm with a massive wind field. All right, so our special coverage on our storm here, look at this. So as we head throughout the rest of the afternoon and evening of Sunday, this low winding up across the Carolinas, you can see it's pushing moisture along with a disturbance here in the Ohio Valley that's going to be heading east along with this low to the north like this with essentially two areas of energy combining forces here and that's going to cause some overrunning moisture but you can see here across the Carolinas we're going to see some big time shower and thunderstorm activity here and that's going to be pinwheeling this is midnight look at this so what's going on here is we got this big shield of precipitation to the north these areas here to the south would not be surprised if some of these storms get a little bit on the strong side here. And we're also going to have that uh, flood potential. So look at this. Let's just back this up. This is 4 a.m. on Monday morning. Look at this. This is some big time rains getting into Baltimore, Philadelphia, eastern Pennsylvania, uh, most of downstate New York here and southern New England. Really starting to get in on the act here. Look at this. There's the low pressure center, 984 millibars. This is 4 a.m on monday now look what starts to happen here this is by 8 a.m you can see the lows continuing to strengthen here just south of delmarva right around norfolk here virginia beach area look at this train of moisture just heading right into new york city it's eastern pennsylvania we're also getting another surge of a line moving to the north and tremendous amount of overrunning uh, moisture here and this is this is pretty much all rain at this point so you know maybe some of this changing back to snow here across parts of the lakes but look at this this is by noon we're still dealing this is why i'm concerned about flooding because the rainfall rates especially on the back side of this you can see there's going to be a lot of rainfall rates moving into uh, new england here but look at this they're going to have this band setting up right around or just east of interstate 81 corridor here uh, that's where some of the higher rainfall rates could set up here. Um, and then that is very concerning. And then wrap around, you can see, look at that New Jersey getting hit with another punch here uh, just around noon as well. That pinwheels to the north. The only saving grace is this is moving fast. But look at this. This is a 976 millibar low here on our HRRR future radar here. So look at still winding up here in the Hudson Valley by 4 p.m. Binghamton, you're on the back edge as well. Look at here into the Ohio Valley. We're going to. Take a look at some analysis of what's happening behind this as well. Uh, but take a look at this. This is starting to really wind up and accelerate. And the acceleration is the good news. The bad news is there's going to be a wind field with this as well. And I'm going to show you momentarily how much wind uh, we could actually be looking at here. And look at that. Some convective type precipitation here. This could be in the form of a mixture of heavy rain and snow. Um, on the back side of this as well. So we're analyzing the NAM 3 kilometer now. Essentially, it is looking very similar to the HRRR future radar. And you can see we put this into motion, a big squall line into eastern North Carolina, southeastern Virginia. This is by 9 p.m. Sunday evening. And look at plenty of moisture spreading northward here throughout the northeast. Look at that as we head towards 11 p.m., into midnight, 2 a.m. What's happening here is essentially eastern Pennsylvania, Eastern Maryland, Eastern Virginia, all the way up through New Jersey, Long Island, and the Hudson Valley here. We're starting to get this big plume of moisture heading northward here. This is where we're going to see some very high rainfall rates here. And as we continue to go in time, you know, some of these storms could actually be pretty strong. It is concerning. Look what the uh, NAM 3 kilometers setting up here. A very ba big band of very heavy rain and thunderstorms all the way up into eastern Pennsylvania and southern upstate New York here. So look at that as we continue in time, 6 a.m., 
The NAM three kilometers a little bit farther to the east of Interstate 81, so it's setting up the heaviest rain here, whereas the H triple R sets it up a little bit further to the west here. But nevertheless, the idea is the same. Somebody's going to get hit with some very torrential rain here. And look at this. This winds up pretty fast here by noon. Look what's happening here. You can see the comma shape winding up here across the northeast. Still some heavy rain here across the Poconos on northeastward to New England here. And that, thankfully, by 3, 4, 5 p.m. here, you can see this exiting very quickly to the northeast. Thankfully, you know, by 1 a.m. Tuesday morning. The only thing we have to deal with at this point is this wraparound snow shower action. So I wanted to briefly show you what the precipitation is going to be doing on the backside of this low pressure system. So as we head towards 7 a.m., uh, this is the 18th Monday morning. Let me just back up here. So here we go. Right around 9, 8 a.m., you can see Cleveland, you're still got some rain showers here, but look at just behind it. You've got some squally snow showers setting up. And that throughout the day, as we head towards 3 p.m., it starts to change over to, you know, some wet snow showers, some bursts of heavier snow as well uh, from Cleveland and Pittsburgh southwestward here. So that's something we're going to keep an eye on here and look at by 5 p.m., you know, just after the sun sets here. You got some moisture enhancement here. Uh, behind the low pressure system. So some lake enhancement combined with some uh, moisture enhancement on the backside of the low. It's going to help uh, increase the chances of some uh, so snow, snowfall accumulations here you can see on the backside, and that just solidifies overnight as we head throughout Monday night into, there it is, 11 p.m. Monday night. And as we continue throughout, look at, th there's that snow squall just moving across Pennsylvania here. There could be some thunder with this as well, some thunder snow. And that just progresses eastward here towards 4 a.m., 5 a.m., there towards Scranton and Harrisburg towards 6 a.m. And then you see, look at the lake bands setting up from Cleveland on northeastward here to Buffalo, Syracuse, and some wraparound snow here uh, as far east of this Poconos. And the Catskills here on 7 a.m. on Tuesday morning. So here's your liquid equivalent precipitation here. Look at this. This is a lot of rain moving up here. All the way up the East Coast from Northern Florida, all the way to Maine, and even towards Quebec. Look at this. Yeah, this is a lot of rain here into Northern California. This is occurring later Tuesday into Wednesday. But here we go. Most of this falling Sunday and Monday across the East Coast. So we start here into the Southeast. You can see widespread two to as much as four, maybe even five and a half inches here across coastal Carolinas. And as we head up into the mid-Atlantic here, look at this big plume of moisture, mostly Sunday into early Monday. That is a solid two to as much as four inches, especially closer to these yellowish colors you can see here. Uh, but into the red, that's where we're going to see a solid two and a half to as much as three and a half inches of rain. And those locally higher amounts towards four inches, you can see into these yellow zones, definitely heed those flash flood watches and flood watches. And as we head up into the northeast here, yeah, look at this. A lot of this falling Sunday night into Monday, Monday morning. Look at this. This is a lot of rain. I do notice uh, the European model has inched a little bit further to the east, uh, still from the I-81 corridor on eastward, two plus inches of rain, but solid three inches of rain here in this area, clo close to four inches in some of these yellow areas. So watch out. So as we take a look at the HRRR model for our liquid, wow, look at this. Yeah, the HRRR has been a little bit further to the west than global model guidance here. You can see the heaviest precipitation a little bit inching towards the IA1 corridor here. Yeah, look at this. This is a solid four to six inches. You got to watch the upsloping that occurs on these southeast winds. And look at this band getting going here across the eastern part of the mid-Atlantic as well. But these areas where you see upsloping of the Poconos, Catskills, these mountains here into parts of New England as well. This is where you get that orographic lift. The air is being pushed up the mountains and you wring out that moisture. That's where we could see some areas four to six inches. I'm a bit concerned about that. All right, so as we take a look at the wind field with this system, you know, there's going to be some gusts in the 20s and 30s well out ahead of this system, but that starts to fade Sunday evening. The core of the strongest winds is going to come in about Monday morning, just before sunrise into southern and central New Jersey, upwards of maybe 50 to 60 miles per hour here. Now, sometimes these mesoscale models have a tendency to overdo, overshoot on these gusts. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but you know, even if this is, you know, 
60% of the way, you know, wind gusts are going to be getting to the 40, 50, maybe approaching 60 mile per hour range here just after sunrise, heading up towards most of New Jersey, downstate New York into parts of southern New England. And this just intensifies throughout the day. Look at the core of the strongest winds heading into southern New England. Also another core, you can see where this uh, boundary is, and another core just behind it as these northwest winds kick in, getting pretty gusty as well, 40 to 50 miles per hour. And then look at southerly winds on the easterly side. That's where the east east of where this low tracks. That's where the core of the strongest winds is going to wind up here. And look at even on the backside here, the ridge tops of the Poconos and Catskills as we head late afternoon, early evening hours, really winding up here. Even some gusts into the 40s here across parts of the Great Lakes. So this system has a big wind field with it. So as we look at the core of the strongest winds with the European model, you can see right off the southeast coast there, that's going to be pinwheeling uh, north along the coastline here. And you can see the outer banks in North Carolina there getting into the 60 to 70 mile per hour range here. So that is pretty significant. But as we head towards Sunday evening, especially Monday morning, there it is into the northeast. We're going to zoom in momentarily here. This is a storm with a massive wind field here, and especially areas from I-95 eastward. That's where you're going to get into the 50, 60 plus mile per hour range here. All right, so looking at the European model average six-hour wind gusts here, this gives us a better idea of the core of the strongest winds. There's sunrise. Let me just back that up just one frame here. You can see, especially east of the I-95 corridor, this is where you get into the 40, 50. Look at Long Island here, well into the 60s. So it looks like it's verifying here with the European model. And look at that. The core of the strongest winds continue. Eastern New England, eastern uh, Long Island here as we head throughout noon hour and into the well into the evening hours of uh, Monday evening here. So really winding up in parts of Cape Cod, wind gust into the 60 to 70 mile per hour range, and that heads to the northeast. Thankfully, the system does move out pretty quick, but still pretty gusty here on the backside as well. And here's our uh, GFS model, by the way, showing you a very similar situation as we head throughout the rest of Sunday. The Outer Banks in North Carolina, Delmarva there getting into the 40 to 60 mile per hour gust range. And then up the coast towards sunrise on Monday morning. I do want to make note, any of those heavier showers and thunderstorms, convective type elements, can bring some of these stronger winds to the surface pretty easily as well. So, you know, any type of thunderstorm or gusty shower, heavier shower activity will be allowed to bring some of those wind that's really much aloft here uh, down to the surface so we're getting to the snowfall amounts here on the back side of the system especially right around cleveland you could see an inch or two it looks like at this point um ground temperatures are warm so that a lot of it's going to melt initially but there will be some accumulation look at this from especially just southeast of erie pennsylvania up to dunkirk this is where we could see closer to six maybe eight inches here are the mountains of eastern west virginia as well and then a general like one to two inches. This is interesting on the backside of the low here uh, towards Ottawa. We could be looking at six to eight inches here. That's pretty interesting. So for the HRRR model here into the northeast, there is our snowfall forecast. You can see there's the snow belt areas, especially inland, right around Cleveland, Erie, Dunkirk, southeast of Buffalo here. That's where you're seeing, you know, those two to four, three to six, maybe those higher elevations, it just inland could get upwards of eight inches. It's possible. Look at the mountains of West Virginia as well. And then just to generalize inch or so uh, into some of these darker blue areas. And I did want to make note severe weather outlook. Yeah, the area of eastern Carolinas here pretty much and general thunderstorms all the way up into the northeast. But look at this as we head towards Monday here, even into parts of New England here, New Jersey area, Long Island, you might have to watch out for strong to severe thunderstorms, especially bringing some of those heavier winds to the surface. All right. So if you take a look at the upper air pattern here for North America, you can see what's going on here. We got that big area of low pressure coming out of the Gulf, riding with this energy coming out of the Great Lakes region and combining forces to create. And there, there is some blocking going on to the northeast here. Thankfully, you can start to see it does allow the system to kind of make a kind of a clean exit here, but you can see it's still nevertheless slower than it could be. So, you know, that's why, hence we have so much heavy rain. Now, as we head towards the 24th and the 25th, yeah, this is classic El Nino. You can see lots of troughiness in the southern states and a massive ridge here 
across the northern tier. All right, so as we go further out here onto the European model, you can see as we continue to go out through, there's our low pressure on the European model. Very similar to our mesoscale models, maybe just a tad bit to the east here, although showing right over New York City uh, by 10 a.m. on Monday morning. So that's going to be winding up here across the northeast. There's that wraparound snow shower action behind it. Do we have anything to look forward to through Christmas week and New Year's week here? Well, high pressure is going to be dominating much of eastern Canada and the eastern U.S. here. And the only system we see on the heels here, there's two systems, one across the Gulf of Alaska and the other one off of South, Car or South California here. Look at that. That's going to be pinwheeling towards California. We do have another system moving in here. Uh, to the Ohio Valley and Mississippi Valley. This looks to be all rain event, just too warm as we continue to go out in time. I'll show you that on the GFS precipitation depiction here. Now, as we go through, this is Christmas Eve. Yeah, it's pretty active here across the south, but I don't think there's any real big wintry cold snaps here. So this should be mostly all rain, except maybe the mountains here, the four corners, where it's been pretty active with the snowfall as of late. And look at that, that blocking high to the east. This is like a Bermuda high. This isn't even like a wintertime high. We see by Christmas day. Yeah, it looks like, you know, big rainstorm here from the central section to the Carolinas here. And as we continue in time, could we have maybe an east coast spin up here? Euro's kind of hinting the day after Christmas here trying to get something going let's see if that shows up here on the gfs all right so is our system here showing you on the gfs some precipitation depiction there's that snow wrapping around behind our area of low pressure as we get into monday and tuesday you know some of the snow belt areas could see you know upwards of three to six inches we'll have to keep an eye on that locally higher but that system thankfully is a fast mover now you see there's another secondary low that tries to develop right around the 21st so as we head throughout the week you know, on the back side of that, but it looks like it's going to clip maybe Nova Scotia and Newfoundland here. But look at that, our new system here in the Central Plains on the 22nd that I showed you on the European model, it looks like all rain. And that's going to continue through the 23rd into the 24th. You see the, behind this high pressure system, the wind flow is like this out of the Gulf. So plenty of moisture. There's that snow across the Four Corners region, looking a little quiet here on the West Coast as well. Canada, especially eastern Canada, looks really, really quiet here. Now, look at this. Yeah, this low pressure starts to wind up across the central section for Christmas Eve. You know it just does not look like a white Christmas here across the east. A surge of moisture. There could be maybe some wet snowflakes here on the backside, maybe towards Chicago, parts of central Missouri, but it's going to be very marginal because the cold air just really is not entrenched here. Now, this low pressure gets wound up across the Virginia area here. By the day after Christmas, a surge of moisture here, maybe some snow, wet snow on the backside of this two days after Christmas here on the 27th as low pressure winds up. So this is that low the European model was hinting at. But as I said before, it's very marginal for cold air. There's the next big system plowing into the Pacific Northwest. But other than that, there is not, let me just back that up, last frame here, the 29th. There is not too much to you know write home about here. And look at this. Things get really quiet across the east, although I do caution you, there is an area of low pressure forming right across the southern plains, but could this set us up for maybe a quiet New Year's in the east? We'll have to take a look. All right, so as we take a look at the tropics here, what is going on here across the Caribbean and the Gulf? Well, let's take a look here. That frontal boundary is going to be heading to the east, and I'll show you those rainfall amounts from the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, and especially through Hispaniola here. We could be looking at some heavy rainfall amounts as we head through Tuesday into Wednesday. That starts to weaken a little bit. You can see, you know, a little bit of a northeast flow here, some showers here across the southern Caribbean, but Central America is looking much drier here, as well as Mexico. Mexico is going through a really nice quiet uh, weather period here along with this high pressure building across eastern north america it continues to build across the caribbean and mexico as well now look what's happening here by christmas eve the gulf's really getting going here as we get that tropical flow out of the southeast but look at the caribbean islands you're looking pretty good for the most part maybe the cayman islands getting clipped christmas day with some showers here but for the most part it is looking quiet until the day after Christmas here in Jamaica. You could see some showers moving through here. Also, the Lesser Antilles, some light showers, but nothing really to write home about here. All right, so taking a look at the GFS here across the Caribbean, it looks very similar to the European model. 
some showers moving through uh, Jamaica and the Cayman Islands as we head throughout later in the week here on the 22nd. So Friday, you can see. But let me just back this up just a little bit. You can see that front sinking to the south over the next 24 to 48 hours. Thankfully behind it, you know, just a few showers here as we head towards the 22nd. But watch this. Things get really, really quiet here as we head towards Christmas. In fact, the only showers here across the eastern Gulf and northern part of the Caribbean, the northwestern part of the Caribbean. And look at that. Day after Christmas, GFS is a bit more optimistic here from Jamaica all the way across the Caribbean island chain here. The only thing we got to worry about here is this big front plowing across the Gulf, another low pressure system looks to be forming here and then heading northeast across the Bahamas. The Bahamas have been getting hit with a lot of rainfall lately. You can see another heavy rain event. It looks like three days after Christmas here. Is that in trains here to the northeast? So here we go for the tropics. We're going to take a look briefly at your rainfall amounts. They're mostly around Jamaica and the Cayman Islands as we head through uh, the next 24 to 36 hours here. And then eventually towards Hispaniola where we could get upwards of 80 to 120 millimeters, that's three to four inches. But Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, you should be see about 40 to 60 millimeters. That's upwards of about an inch and a half, two inches likely. Look at the Bahamas, though. As we head towards the next, say, 24 to 48 hours, there is a lot of rain, 90 to 100 millimeters likely here across much of the Bahamas. And as we head to the Eastern Caribbean, look at this. It looks pretty quiet with the exception for a little wave moving through uh, the southern Lesser Antilles here. You can see upwards of 20 to 40 millimeters, about three quarters of an inch on average here. But look at that Hispaniola. It looks like it stops just before it reaches Puerto Rico. This is through Thursday, December 21st. So you can see the front kind of getting hung up here across Hispaniola. So anything brewing out here into the Western Pacific? Well, we have this area of low pressure just east of the Philippines here. We're going to continue to keep an eye on it. But for the most part, it looks like it's going to weaken through Tuesday here. Maybe try to spin up here towards southern Vietnam. But as we just pan out just a little bit you can see things look pretty quiet for the most part we do have a frontal boundary let me just stop that right there right around the 21st a frontal boundary draped across the northern philippines it is japan's cold season up here so no typhoons this time of year to worry about but watch this as we continue to go in time that front sinks southward here you know this time of year you got to watch up for spin-ups like this but for the most part you know yeah the intertropical convergence zone looks pretty active here but nothing really spinning out of it and don't go anywhere i just have more weather here in just a moment check out that my affiliate here these awesome maps have a look at this i am proud to announce that i am now an affiliate with trilogy maps trilogymaps.com bringing you the most digital customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet these maps are simply stunning it's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on the resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning, digital, professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. As we take a look at your temperature outlook, look at this. So yeah, we got some cold air filtering behind the system, but look at that big surge of 60s along the U.S. East Coast. There is our big pool of cool air. Not going to say cold because it could be a lot colder, although 20s. You know, we've got some 20s here in the upper Midwest, but watch that. Pivots towards the Northeast. It does modify just a tad here. So, you know, we're still looking at 30s here across much of the lakes and into interior Northeast. But look at the warming trend behind it here into the plains as we get towards your Wednesday. Yeah, this is not going to look very much like Christmas, literally days before Christmas here. Um, that warmth is going to be pushing east. You see, look at northern Florida. We do get a cool spell behind it. Look at it in the 50s. That's kind of interesting. But watch this. As we go in time, that's not going to last long. We start to see a warming trend here across the east. The only cold air that I can see here is really confined to really northern sections here as we head into Thursday. And look at this. Friday, the... I can't find really any areas below freezing, maybe northern Maine and some of the mountain peaks here of the Rocky Mountains, but that's about it. And we head next weekend, Saturday. I'm sorry, this just does not look 
very much like Christmas. A extended outlook from hometown viewers, Binghamton, Des Grand Upper Susquehanna River Valley of New York and Pennsylvania. Take a look at this. This is going to be a big rain event. I'm worried about the rivers, especially the Susquehanna going to above, just slightly above Bankful here. So minor flooding is forecast. We could actually see a lot of the creeks and streams also come out of their banks. So we are heading up towards rain all the way through Sunday night, Monday, and ending, you know, early evening, Monday evening, we're going to be looking upwards of about three inches on average. That changes over to some wet snow showers um, late Monday night, Tuesday morning, maybe an inch or less. And then Wednesday, we are clearing as we start a new warming trend. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather. Join me on Facebook at Media Mark, also at Weather Northeastern, also at Hurricane Northeastern, and also at Susquehanna Weather. Also, Twitter at Weather Eastern, and you can visit me at MediaMark.com. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to check out my winter weather outlook for 2023-24. A link in the description down below as well as my affiliate, Trilogy Maps.